So what did just happen here? Basically what happened was that I sent, right, a query and I put the name of the, the query and GraphQL looked for it. Let me make this big. GraphQL looked for it on my server and it found it, right? And then it looked for a resolver for this query. The resolver is here, all right? Now what happens if I do this? My name, for example. It will say query my name is defined in resolvers, but not on the schema. The schema is this guy. All right, so it is defined on resolvers, but not on the schema. This means that I cannot reach this query, right? Name. That's awesome. Now look at this, for example. I'm going to come here and I'm going to change this to an integer. This is going to restart. All right. And now if I press play, it says that what I told them that I was going to do was that I was going to return an int, this means a number, from the database. And actually what I'm returning, it's a string. So as you can see, it's a very safe uh, environment on the way, the, in the sense of typings, on the type. You told me you were going to give me an integer, why do you give me a string? Boom, that's an error. Right? This is something super cool. Now you might be asking yourself, what the fuck is Playground? Playground is something that um, GraphQL Yoga comes with. Uh, it just lets you test your um, it lets you test your database. All right, that's it. That's all it does. It lets you test your database, and you can see it nicely. It's like Postman. If you ever used Postman, it's like that, but for your database. Okay, this is all playground playground stuff. Actually, I think it's GraphQL. That is the endpoint, GraphQL, all right? The root is Playground. But actually, whenever we send something like this, let's look at the network here. Let's send it again. And on the network, we are sending to, ah, we're sending a post. That's it, a post, all right? Because as you understand, this query is data, right? That's like a JSON data. So you need to send it to somewhere that is a post, all right? So this means that all the queries, mutations, whatever, it always be always will be sent as a post, all right? Because the database has to, the server has to get it. So this is your first resolver, all right? This is awesome. You have Nicholas, you can send them. Let's create uh, actually something better. Let's do this. Let's do, let's create a const here and let's say a person, no, Nicholas. Nicholas equals, and let's say name, uh, Nicholas, right? And let's say age, let's say 18, and let's say nationality, no, fuck it, uh, gender, let's say female, 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 all right? That's it. And now, whenever I ask, I'm going to change the query name, I'm going to call this person, whatever, I'm going to return a Nicholas, all right? That's basically it. Remember, this is a shortcut for this. All right, it's the same thing. Okay, now I'm going to change this and I'm going to change it and I'm gonna change my query to person, all right? So person, I send a Nicholas. But now I need to explain what am I going to give back to? What is it? Is it, um, is it a string? Is it an object? Is it a what? Well, in this case, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be a Nicholas. So I am going to create a new type here. I'm going to call this type Nicholas. And I'm going to say that Nicholas has this thing. Has a gender, has a name. All right, so gender is a string required needs to be there, age is, no, <laughs> integer, required, and name is a string as well, and is required, all right? Now, when this restarts, I'm going to go back to my playground, I'm going to refresh, and I want you to see something. Playground is so cool that you are able to see a description of the queries that you can make. This is very, very useful for developers that learned your API. All right, or your project, when you forgot your API. 
Like, I don't know if you remember, but it's always hard to remember this returns what and this URL does what when you do rest. But in this case, this is it. Person returns a string. What? No, it doesn't return a string. Oh, sorry. Yes. Now we say we return a Nicholas. It said returns a string, but that's not true. Returns a Nicholas. Refresh. And as you can see, person returns a Nicholas. And this is one advantage of describing your API data. It's a very good thing because you can have tools like this that understand your database, all right? And as you can see here, it's telling me that I can get the name, I can get the age, and I can get the gender. Awesome. I have a description of what my data looks like, okay? And as you can see, right now, this is my data source. Right now, it's not a database. It's any, anything could work for GraphQL, all right? So now here, I'm gonna change this because as you can see, the name doesn't exist, but person does. And it says field person of type Nicholas must have a selection of subfields. This is what I told you before. You can ask GraphQL for the data that, that you want. In this case, I only want to get Nicholas age. I don't wanna get anything else. I just wanna get his age. That's it. When I send it, it's giving me the person all right, I'm returning here Nicholas, as you can see, but I'm only asking for his age, done. That's all I'm asking for. If I wanna ask for the gender, all right, done. Or if I wanna ask for the name, I get everything. But it's optional again, so you can have a component in React or a frontend or whatever that only needs to get the age. That's all it needs to do, all right? This is why I fell in love with GraphQL, because how beautiful it is. All right, this is it for the video. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.